Family violence has always been a hidden issue and then something incredible happened. The Victorian Government called a Royal Commission into Family Violence. It was a world first. And the Commission forensically reviewed the Victorian family violence system and looked at the international evidence base and came up with 227 recommendations that were designed to build a system to keep women and children safe and also start the work of preventing violence from even happening in the first place. And while there's been an incredible amount of work undertaken since that time, the reality is we're not finished yet. I'm Fiona McCormack and I'm the CEO of Domestic Violence Victoria, which is the peak body for family violence services. I'm Christine O'Laris from Gender Equity Victoria, the peak body for gender equity, women's health and the prevention of violence against women. My name is Carolyn Worth, I'm representative of the CASA Forum, which is the peak body for the 15 Centres Against Sexual Assault in Victoria. I'm Jackson Fairchild from No to Violence, the peak body for specialist services who work with men using family violence. We have come together because family violence is still our state's biggest crime, health, economic and human rights problem. And it can no longer be treated as a political football. We have a roadmap. We know how to tackle this issue and we want to get it done. We are asking all political parties to commit to long-term support for funding every one of the Royal Commission's recommendations. There are some issues that face a community that are so significant they require those across the political spectrum to come together to fix it. And family violence is one of those issues. We're part of the Unite Against Family Violence campaign because a woman is murdered every week across Australia. A quarter of all Australian women have experienced at least one incident of family violence. In Victoria, over the last year, there were uh, over 76,000 attendances by police at family violence incidents. And we know there are groups who experience far higher rates of violence. For example, Aboriginal women are 35 times more likely to be hospitalised as a result of, of family violence. I am part of the Unite Against Family Violence campaign. We are asking all political parties to unite to end family violence because sexual assault is often perpetrated in families and we know that by working together we can end family violence. Since the age of 15, one in five women has experienced sexual assault and over their lifetime, one in two women will have experienced sexual harassment. Women are more likely to experience violence by somebody they know than by a stranger. Children often see or hear violence between their parents. Domestic and family violence is a factor in many child protection cases. Over 90% of children who attend treatment programs at the Gatehouse Centre in Melbourne are from households where family violence is present. In the last 12 months, the number of sexual offences reported to police has gone up by 13%. I'm part of the Unite Against Family Violence campaign. We're asking all political parties to unite to end family violence because together we can ensure that women are equal, healthy and safe. Intimate partner violence is the leading cause of death, disability and injury in women between the ages of 18 to 44. Violence against women is serious, prevalent and driven by gender inequality. Together we can create a fairer and safer society where women of all backgrounds have equality of voice, of opportunity and of power with men. I am part of the Unite Against Family Violence campaign. We are asking all political parties to unite to end family violence because family and sexual violence is overwhelmingly committed by men against women. Women are at least three times more likely than men to experience violence from an intimate partner. Since the age of 15, one in six Australian women experience physical or sexual violence from a current or former partner compared to one in 20 Australian men. Women are five times more likely than men to require medical attention or hospitalisation because of violence from their intimate partner and five times more likely to report fearing for their lives. Samantha Fraser, Eurydice Dixon, La Chol, Joy Rowley, Fiona Lau, Tracy Connolly, Carolyn Wheelis, Simone Fraser, Karen Ashcroft, and Amanda Harris. These are just some of the Victorian women who have been murdered by men. We can't stop now. Complacency is not an option while women and children are still not safe. If we want to see an end to family violence, we need united leadership from our political parties to make that happen. If we all work together, we can actually end family violence.